Hey guys, so we're back at Clifton House. Uh, we're joined by General Manager Francisco. Francisco, thank you very much for having us back. Thank you. Thank you for, for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Um, let's start with a number, actually. Uh, and I want to know what that number kind of means to you. Okay. The number is 282. So what are your, what are your initial thoughts from that number? 282? Yeah. Okay. Nothing actually comes to mind straight away. Really? <laughs> Why 282? So 282, according to the Cliveden Twitter profile, mm. is the total number of days between each lockdown that you haven't been able to invite guests. Yeah. So 282, like in a, in a, in a normal calendar year, that's like more than 70, 80%, right? It is, but you need to look at the positive sides. You will have a lot more than 282 days where you can actually invite guests. And, exactly. And the, the, the thing that's um, that actually... And, and, this is the reason why I wanted you to explain why you picked that number. Is that actually I I'm a I'm always a, a half full kind of guy. Okay. Um. So yes, we'll see some fortunes that we were unable to to welcome guests for that amount of time. We look at a positive side, and actually that gives us an opportunity to do a lot of work internally, mm. get the house ready to welcome guests, not for a hundred, not for another 282 days, but then be ready to actually welcome guests, hopefully for the next 200 years, 282 years, or 282 months, or whatever we were to pick as a number. I think the reality is, it's no point to cry about what has happened. The future is what matters. And uh, I, I think I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. Um, and yeah, 282, 300, 400, to me it feels like a lifetime, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does feel like a lifetime. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that attitude. Um, but I'd be keen to know about what the vibe is like in the Cliveden camp at the moment. Of course, you've had, you know, 12th of April, uh, outdoor hospitality, you've got... May 17th, looming around the corner. Um, what's the vibe like? Are they uh, motivated? Uh, what's the morale like as well within the team? We, we, are, we are a crazy team to, to an extent. And, yeah. you know, we, we really, we've got, we've got a, a big family um, relationship mm. where we really know each other very well. Yeah. We meet regular, regularly. Uh, we've got weekly calls, we've got weekly conversations, we've got separate chats and, and so on. So, so you know, as, as anyone in the industry, some of us would have struggled a bit more than others mm. and, uh, and are really keen now to get get back and, and, and so on. But the reality is every everyone that I speak to uh, from my team is excited to the fact that we will, it comes May 17, Beautiful. we reopen, our occupancy is very good, uh, we've got good business on the books and we can actually focus in, in, in those positives as opposed mm. to being worrying as we were perhaps on, on the first lockdown yeah. as to okay, we will open, how will the markets react, will we have a demand Will we? Will people want to travel? What's happening? We're in a completely different position now. We've learned a lot over the last twelve months, um, but we've seen we've seen what our property is able to deliver. Therefore, the team is really motivated, but also That's great. quite uh, daunted by the fact that you know it comes yeah. May seventeen and he's non-stop. So it's mm. it's kind of finding that balance. Of getting things back to some normality, uh, I don't want to say new normal because I'm fed up of listening to new normals now. Um, but getting things back to normality, and at the same time being able to cope with the demand and, and the stress that mm. you know our laws. Uh, okay, that's quite interesting. So, do you almost think the twelfth um, of April date allowed you to kind of get back into the rhythm of servicing guests? having your property open etc or would you rather have gone from you know zero to a hundred um, well yeah it's, it's funny you say that um i i used to say i was a specialist in hotel openings um <laughs> just because i i did so many hotel openings yeah. over the years before my times at, at Clifton and, and so on 
and and now I make a joke that I'm a specialist in hotel closings because <laughs> <laughs> I've closed it, I've closed Clifton for three times and uh, other than those times you know mm. I had to close some properties that were <clears throat> seasonal and and so on but never to the extent that we had to do over the last twelve months. I I'm a believer that soft openings are a good thing. Um, so yeah. actually the twelfth of April. Uh, opening of the outdoor hospitality started, started getting the vibe of people coming through the property, through the gates, walking in our grounds, mm. enjoying the spa and so on, actually gave an opportunity to get the team back and get the team back and, and feeling motivated and excited mm. about the fact that they were back to work, but also opposed to having the 8 or the 80, they were, they were, they were able to cope slowly with it although saying that you know first day we opened on 12 of april we had over 100 for lunch so is it really a soft opening probably not but at least not on the team size but uh, but you know the perspective that we didn't have all the hotel bedrooms occupied in the, in the, in the cottages and and then everything happening mm -hmm. you know, certainly was was useful um because as ever i look at everything we do and for me is how can we make it better Mm -hmm. tomorrow it needs to be better than today so therefore we need to learn our lessons along the way our um, vision as a property uh, is uh, respecting the past and perfecting the future and i'm very much i love that to do everything in my life yeah and and to the businesses i've run and and actually never perhaps thought really into it until until joined Clifton and, and took over as general manager that respecting the past and perfecting the future is a, is a big <coughs> thing so we respect what has happened over the last 12 months uh, and, and even beyond that. But it's about the future, it's about how, how we perfect it. We respect what happened on the 12th of April when we opened and we've got 100 for lunch and, 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 and there are some challenges and, and so on. And actually we're perfecting the future because we look at those things and we go, well, actually we can make a few more changes and it becomes even better than what already is. I love that respect the past perfect the future it's a big thing and i think if all of us would apply that motto into our own lives yeah it would make it a <laughs> huge <easier>. difference yeah <laughs> because we would learn from yeah what has happened. that's not an official motto it, it, it is it is, it is. Yeah, ah, okay it is our our, our our vision really is mm. respecting the past and perfecting the future okay so, is that the Latin stuff outside? No, <laughs> no, no, no. The Latin, the Latin letters are related to the Duke of Buckingham and, and the history of the house, basically, how, how the house started. So. Okay. Let's talk about sales and marketing. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, like you said, uh, you've obviously had an opportunity to step back, and I guess you've looked at how you operate, the way you do sales, the way you do marketing. Could you speak to some of the changes that you and your team will be making if... If, uh... I think I think we've made the, the changes. We we supported by a very central. Uh, um, we supported by a central team, which is very. And when I call central, it's not really central because they're really involved in every single one of our properties. Mm. And it's not like they sit in an office and they make the decisions. But we've got a, a support team, as I tend to, to to actually say that they are, because they they really are a great support team from a sales and marketing point of view with a, an amazing commercial director who actually looks at everything we do and, and goes, okay, well, what, what do you think about that? What do you think? And he's almost, uh, Lee, who's uh, our commercial director, he's always thinking, okay, what's next? Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared yeah. for that? And, and was, she doesn't make all the decisions on her own because obviously we, we all have a, a bit of a say in it. Mm. But she's very proactive about you know, anticipating as well those changes and those challenges ahead. So therefore, when you run the property like Clifton and you're part of a group like Iconic Luxury Hotels where you've got a great support team, mm -hmm. um, there is you, you always feel like you supported in every decision you take Absolutely. And, and but it also gives you an opportunity to you made your mind you've taken your almost have taken your decision and you're about to implement it but you've had that conversation and suddenly you think well actually what if what that and actually you even improve already what your opinion was yeah so from a sales and marketing point of view our focus 
has always been uh, over the last 12 months and, and in general <coughs> is always about keeping in touch with our guests and making sure that whatever we deliver to them is relevant as well so right. um, you'll probably see on our social media Dash which is my Labrador has become the the the, the, the king or the lord of, of Clifton and, and actually that started as a funny thing and so it was like well I, I moved in on the first lockdown and Dash yeah. came <laughs> Dash came with me as, and, and you know it, it, for a few days it was me and him and that's basically it and we were walking around the property did he get a room to himself or? Yeah, well he doesn't get a room for himself but we had to, the biggest suite so he, <laughs> he had his own space <laughs> so and um Dash kept exploring different parts of the house and uh, I, I, I love getting to know every single area so we explored a lot of the grounds and obviously the house I knew very well but the grounds perhaps I, I hadn't hadn't realised how much actually it is to offer especially at that time on the first lockdown where the flowers are changing where or the colour keeps changing on a day to day and mm. when you're open and you're operating at, at, at 200 miles an hour mm -hmm you actually don't realise the change that the, the, the tulips have opened or you don't. Whilst during that time, I almost I was almost able to build a time lapse with, with all the photos that I was taking, all the videos I was doing. And, and suddenly we decided, okay, well, we were talking with the marketing team and Lee and, and we said, oh, it would be amazing if we just do a post about Dash and, and so on and, and, and a bit of a video. So we did that. And as we did it, the amount of people that contacted us asking for more content about Dash yeah. than anything else, we were like, is, is this real? You know, and, and actually people were intrigued yeah. to what he was exploring, <coughs> what, the, what he had been up to on that yeah. day and, and so on. And, and this is amazing because actually it really, it was about keeping in touch and showing to our guests what we've been up to. Um, but with a human feel, not yeah, a, a sales, feel. not a sales push. Mm. It was very much let's keep in touch. Yeah, you know, let's bring Clifton to you. You can't come to Clifton, so yeah. let's bring Clifton to you. And that's basically what we did. And that 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 kind of has been our approach over the the, the, the lockdowns we've had. But very much is our approach in everything we do. Is how do we how do we deliver the Clifton experience? And if you can't come to us, how can we come to you? Yeah. And if you can come to us, let's let's make sure you've got the greatest experience ever. Um, so so our focus continues to be in, in delivering experiences. Perhaps where we you know the last last twelve months have given us an opportunity to really look at things that we've done before and and sometimes be a bit more brave with it. I.e. we had um, last year we had the Airstream uh, which we've worked with our champagne partner. Mm. I don't know if I mentioned before, but and basically we were doing champagne takeaway so people could go on the grounds and enjoy a glass of champagne. Mm. This year we've got Tuk Tuk with Mosa Coffee. And again, yeah, coffee and you go in the grounds and, and you have your coffee, but also has allowed our guests that are dining in the Astor Grill yeah. to actually grab a coffee on the go and, and then go for a walk uh, in the grounds after lunch. And it encourages people to see more of Clifton than perhaps just the lunch element that they've been Absolutely. up to. Um, later in the year, we've got a partnership with, with uh, Sipsmith and, and uh, Gin, and we'll have a, a gin cab um, parked at uh, the front of the house, and we'll be doing gin. Give me the day. Um, just give me the day. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm sure I'll be a regular as well, So, um, <laughs> but uh, on, on the end of my shifts. So you... You have given us an opportunity to look at what we do and, and be, be not only be more creative, but be mm. brave about it. Because Clifton is, as you drive in, a property that people assume is very traditional. So, yes. So the last two yeah. months gave us an opportunity to actually show that we're perhaps not as traditional as okay. other people think. Okay. What would your advice be then to, uh, I guess, other hoteliers, uh, listeners maybe... Um, you know, looking for advice on how to stay connected with uh, guests. So uh, I'm Cliv Clifton have uh, well definitely a, a national, but I guess a European, maybe even a global fan base. How are you staying connected with your guests? Uh, but then in tandem, how are you attracting new guests? So people like myself who've never stayed here, 
uh, never been here for food. Uh, how, what's the balance like? And then perhaps you could also speak a little bit about loyalty as well. And has your approach on loyalty shifted? So I think I think you need to break them by parts. You you need to keep in contact with your you with your guests, your loyal guests, your regular guests. You need to keep in touch with them, but you need to keep in touch by providing them with an experience. Um, I we did last year. Uh, I was doing videos of my walk around the house and, mm. and telling a little bit about the Easter. I was doing a bottler store live, um, which was something I would, we would never have done before. Mm. So we were keeping connected and keep showing them what clips and kept looking during the, that yeah. period. So we were still very much present in their lives. But also that gives an opportunity to actually link up with other guests that mm. were looking in and thinking, okay, what, you know, on through social media and, and other platforms, suddenly people were looking at our videos and going, oh, that looks amazing. We must go there and yeah. see it. So suddenly you're creating a new a new generation, a new group of people that want to come and experience Clifton. So end up both from a national and an international level. So to stay connected by by delivering in what they're looking for. Don't just try, especially on tough periods um, like the lockdowns have been for a lot of people. Uh, in a way, it's almost pointless to try and sell something. Because yeah. people don't know when they're going to be able to take it. Exactly. So actually... Be connected, talk about who you are, what you do, revisit your mission, revisit your purpose, your vision, and continue to deliver on that, but continue to deliver in things that people can appreciate from their own home. Mm. And almost planting the seeds on people's minds so they can then think, when that place opens, I want to be the first one there. Mm. So my advice to hoteliers is listen to your customers, Mm. but listen to your team. A lot of the times, as, as managers, as leaders of our industry, we think we know all the answers. The reality is we don't. Mm. And um, I, often, I often have a conversation with the team and, uh, and, and we're, or we're in a meeting or even with the senior team. And it always amazes me because I, I like listening to people views and and before i formalize my own and i might have my own opinion to start with but actually the more i listen to everybody then i kind yeah. of oh, actually yeah and then actually that always gives me the opportunity to have what i feel is a more broad opinion and strategy but also that takes in consideration all the factors that everybody has mentioned so and so almost Speaking last is not a bad thing mm. um, because it does yeah, give yeah. you that opportunity. So, and, and you know, listen to your team. There, there is no such thing as a dumb idea. So just let them, let them tell you what they feel. That mm. uh, they, 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 let them, let them tell you what they feel that you should be doing. Yeah. And you know, and then, then adapt. Try sometimes. Try. You know, you don't know it. Um, don't know it until you try it you know there is my motto is you never really fail you 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 learn Learn. you know it's either you succeed or you learn that's 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 what happens so Mm. so it's very much that you need to you need to be sure that that's what you're doing and and respect the past perfect the future look at what you've done absolutely perhaps didn't quite work so then then make it better improve it but stay connected tell people what they what they want to hear and you know we, we, I'll give you another example we had this conversation with, with, with guests and we were doing things about dash and, and we were showing photos of the grounds and so on and we had a couple of guests that messages and said oh would you mind taking a photo or a video of this particular area of the grounds <coughs> and we did we did we basically went and this was a bespoke thing yeah. and that we went and, and did it for the guests yeah. and you know, this might have been one person that has never stayed at Clifton. Yeah. But they've heard about it and they want they want us to tell tell them the story or talk about it or show them how does it look like. So we made sure that we were delivering on that. People didn't have those opportunities, so we had the power in our hands to be able to deliver those experiences. So, so mm. we're trying to do that. And and that's very much I think that's the motive for the future is continue to listen to what your guests want. Because they'll tell you what they want yeah. if you allow them, you know, and and surprise them. 
our guests, luckily, most of them will know exactly what they want Absolutely. Uh, to, 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 to be delivered to them. Mm. So make sure you're delivering in what they want, but make sure you surprise them along the way. Yeah. Give them a little bit extra, a few different tokens and, and so on, and suddenly you've created a memorable experience, a, a, a remarkable experience, one that they will remember forever. Mm. I'd be keen to explore what feedback you've got from guests then as a kind of closing topic. So you've been open for two weeks with Outdoor Hospitality. Could you speak to some of the good things that you've heard? Uh, maybe some less good things, if any, that you've heard from guests? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think people are, are extremely happy to be out and extremely happy to, 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 have, to, to have dinners and lunches and be able to celebrate. A lot of people last last year on their birthdays and so on, they were in lockdown this year, it's open so they now can celebrate and suddenly, you know, we received a lot of positive feedback about the area we've created on our door space with the, the Aston Grill area and, and the area in front of our two meeting rooms. Mm. And we received a lot of great feedback on, on, on food and, and, and opening the spa to our members only. We're not open to anyone else other than our members at the moment. Obviously, we'll open on the 17th. Uh, so, so we've received a, a lot of positive feedback, which, which is great to see and, and, a, and a very encouraging uh, elements. Um, as a sideline, I guess, um, one thing that all of us in the industry have seen, and this is not particular to Clifton, I was talking to a few friends the other day, is there aren't enough uh, outdoor heaters anywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there aren't enough blankets to anyone uh, anywhere you go. It, yeah. It's not particular to Clifton, but it's, it's funny, you know, I was talking to someone uh, actually in, in London on, on, on Thursday night. Uh, we went for, for a catch up and, and, and just re look at the industry and and uh, he was saying to me, you know, I received a feedback the other day that they wanted one outdoor heated paired table. Yeah. And I and I and, you know, and How many tables do you have? Exactly, exactly. You know, and and, and this wasn't it's not, not related to Clifton but yeah. But it puts things into perspective um, that sometimes, you know, it's not that we wouldn't want to do it, but there are there are restrictions. I mean, in a place like Clifton, as an example, if we would ever receive that feedback, we would never be able to do it, to be honest. Um, it's an old building, so electrics yeah. is, is very difficult. Clifton yeah. can't have any gas heaters because of um, historic buildings we need to protect and, and so on. So we can't have any gas and uh, open flames near near the building mm. uh, the house has suffered two major fires we don't want another one yeah and uh and you know the the, the electric board would never take uh in a heater per table as 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 an example but i was talking to this friend of mine and he was saying oh yeah they, they were saying that we should have an outdoor heater per table and, <laughs> and i was looking at his outdoor area this is in london and I was looking at his outdoor area, and he had something like 17, 18 tables. Okay. Okay. And then, but some tables were up to six guests. So then I, and I was making the joke with him, and I was saying, well, that table, then technically you would need two heaters because you need one on each side, otherwise someone's going to get too hot, the other one's going to get too cold. Too cold. <laughs> and, and, you know, it is, uh, it's incredible. You know, in the past, yeah. uh, I think before, before COVID, before everything, if people wanted to sit outdoor, they uh, outdoors, they would sit outdoors, no matter eaters, no blankets, no <laughs> nothing. People didn't didn't care of it. Now there is this assumption that you know everywhere you go, you're gonna have a heater, pair, seat, or moss. Yeah, and, everyone and has a fire pit, <laughs> which, which is impossible. And, yeah. uh, but you know, I guess I guess that's the side of. Uh, that's just how it, how it is but the beauty for me is that people are excited to be out and 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 they're really appreciative of everything you do yeah uh, i was talking to to one of our lovely members earlier today um and they, they were just saying it's so lovely to be back it's yeah. so great to be able to come come back to to what we've been doing for the last 30 years and they're so grateful for everything we've done from suspending their memberships during lockdowns into 
into reopening and uh, allowing just for them actually an open opening for spa days and so on as we could and they're so appreciative of all those tiny things that um that, that for me that's that's actually it makes me extremely happy yeah. because it, it shows that the strategy we've taken uh, it, it pays off in in, in it, by, by the way the guests feel so yeah I think that's a beautiful note to end on. Uh, delighted guests. And um, I wish you all the very best for your reopening. I'm definitely going to come and check it out. Thank, Thank you very you. much for taking the time, Francisco. Pleasure. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.